Hello everyone, my name is Srihi Jurovic and today we're going to be talking about SharePoint events. Now we will start from a general overview of the events, then we will go to type of events, there are different types. Uh, we will talk more specifically about one type which is called recurring events. Then we will see uh, the usage on site pages, how it looks like on a web page, and we will talk a little bit more about the advanced options uh, in calendar calendar management. Okay, let's go. So basically, what are the events in SharePoint? Uh, any activities that are taking place in a company, would it be related to work or not, can be uh, arranged and can be um, formed as a uh, event. So. Uh, those are, for example, daily meetings, uh, demo meetings, um, sick leaves, vacations, uh, team gatherings, whatever is scheduled, uh, it can be shown as the event in SharePoint and it can be uh, inserted on the web page. Uh, now, another thing except tracking and organizing uh, different activities is the ability to see different types of calendars in one view on the page, which basically means that not only the team meetings uh, will be displayed, but also, as I mentioned, uh, if you want to see the availability of your colleague or uh, someone from another department, you can uh, merge a few calendars into one view and see when the, that person is available so you can schedule your meeting. <clears throat> Now let's create a, an event list on a SharePoint, um, SharePoint site and we will add a simple event in different ways. Now here is the site content of our site. Uh, to create a new uh, event list, basically the calendar with, in which we will create events, we will need to go to new and add a new app. which is called calendar. Now uh, let's name it social events. Okay, click create. Now here it's shown in our list and let's go to that event list. You see there, there are no events here yet uh, let's see if we can add some event here. Uh, as you may notice here on this top bar, there are events tab and a calendar. We will talk about this calendar later. Let's jump to the events and create new event. Okay, now um, let's let it be office polyanning. Saturday, where we all can gather and clean what's left from for the whole week. Uh, let's say that location will be main office. So as you can see, we can provide uh, details here, uh, title, location, and description, and we should uh, specify the start time and end time. Let's pick a date. That would be. Let's do it this Saturday. At let's say 12 p.m. It will take us two hours, let's say, till 2 p.m. And we'll uh, select a category. We can select from the predefined categories here and we can specify our own like this. Now, there are more types of event than this simple one. We'll talk about this a bit later. And we can click Save. Here's our event. Now, uh, later we will insert the event web part on the page and it will display our event. Now, about the types of events. Basically, there are two things to keep in mind when creating an event. Uh, the event can be one time event or recurring one. So one-time event uh, 
is when we are not planning to repeat that specific event in the future. Uh, let's imagine our Saturday event will be one time event. And uh, when there's a series of repetitive events, uh, let's say uh, activities as uh, work meetings, as um, you know, holidays or something, we can use the recurring events. Uh, we will specify start date, then the interval that we want uh, this uh, event to happen, and, and optionally the end date. Um, other thing to keep in mind is that events can have fixed time. As we specified in our example, we uh, provide start uh, hours and end hour. Or the event can be all day without any specific hours. And here um, I want to talk a little bit more about the recurring events as it, have, it has rich uh, options to customize. Now, the first one is recurrence interval. What it means that uh, we are not necessarily want to have our event each day from the start end to end date. Uh, in this case, we want to specify either it will be uh, weekly each uh, day of week, as you can see here on this screenshot, we can select the days at which this uh, event will be happening by, on a weekly basis. Um, same uh, we can do for monthly and yearly events. Um, now, except that we can uh, specify either we it will be an event with no end date if we are not sure when it would, uh, when the series should end, or it, it may end either by specific date, let's say by the end of a year, or after uh, some uh, number of occurrences. Let's say we have a training series and it will take 10 lessons uh, to complete the whole course. So we can specify 10 occurrences here. Now I would, I would go to our calendar here and try to show it in practice. Let's say, let's pick Monday. Um, also, I did mention that we can create event in several ways. We did it this by top bar. We can also select day and click add. Now, it will be, uh, let's say work meeting, morning stand up meeting. And we will say that it will happen 10 to 11, yes. But we don't want, let's make it a repetitive event, but we don't want it to be every day. We want to make it weekly just to synchronize on Monday and Wednesday. And we plan to hold these meetings, as I mentioned, until the end of the year. So we can go here and mark last Monday of the year. Alternatively, alternatively for other events, we may specify if we go to monthly, either uh, the number of the day in a month. So we can mark every first day of every month, every first day of on two months basis, or we can uh, tie to uh, the specific day of week, which can be like second Wednesday of every third month. So as you can see, uh, it has a lot of options to customize uh, the, the recurrence interval. And the similar is for yearly. Now, the second thing is about the recurrent events is date range. We mentioned that <coughs> we will have certainly definitely have start date, but we may not have end date. It will just go infinitely. And these two options that we mentioned, number of occurrences and end by specific date. Now, let's see the example of the recurring event and how it can be edited. 
There are two options here. We can either select one or several occurrences of the event and edit only them, or we can edit the whole series. Let's look at the example. So here we have a stand-up meeting series. I can click on it and click edit event. Without any other actions, if I make changes and click save, it will edit only this specific meeting on Monday. But I can do this. I can click edit series. And now I have full access to the whole a bunch of options here. And I can edit the whole series. Okay. And now, um, I would like to quickly show how we can use events on our pages. We may have a classic events web part. It's here. So we, we may customize it a bit more. I'll uh, touch that matter lately. Um, uh, and we may have modern events web part, which uh, looks more fancy and has a few options. To customize uh, from within the web page itself. If we edit the page, then we edit the web part. So we may specify the source here, which is very useful if we are, if we are going to pull the uh, events, not from the site collection, but from other sites, for example, or we not want to be overflowed with the events and we select just this site and that's all. In this case, uh, oh, we can select also the events, event list on this site specifically and select one of the event lists here, which uh, this modern web part allows you to customize not go, uh, right away and not go into the event list in the site content. Now, there are more advanced topics about the calendar management, <coughs> which are calendar overlay, metadata, and calendar views. Uh, as I mentioned before, we can kind of merge a few types of calendars, a few calendar lists, a few events lists in our calendar to see them all at once, as we can see here. So here we have general events uh, list, then we have vacation and leaves, as you can see in the color, and the company events. So this can be achieved by using option in this calendar tab here at the top. We can use calendars overlay. If I click that, imagine among, uh, except these three calendars, we have the fourth one. So we can go to new calendar. And first that we want to do is to name this. Let's say we'll name holidays. And to pull the uh, event lists from this side, we need to click resolve first. And then here we go. We have a list of our event lists and we can select public holidays here. Let's, let's Pick another, another color, let's say brown. And we can select always show so we can always see the public holidays here. Okay. Okay, we're done. Now, as you can see, we have another uh, event list displayed on our calendar. And we can see the Independence Day on Friday, the 1st of November. This way we can uh, pull the events list from the calendars of, uh, of other uh, persons so we can see their availability and schedule meetings or calls with those persons. Also, I want to mention about the metadata. Uh, 
if we go and let's say edit this one <clears throat> we may want to um, send the invite or include uh, some specific person to this meeting but out of the box uh, this dialog window do not provide the possibility to do so to do that we have to go to calendar tab <coughs> and go to list settings okay this one is a bit tricky but it's maybe very useful when you want to add a custom properties now here we have content types for our list which is event event list we can open it and then we can add another column the existing column as an example it's attendees you can add it click OK and it should be added to our form let's go back to our event Okay, events here and now let's try to add a new event let's see if that worked so here we can see the attendees and as you start to typing uh, someone's name it will pull the whole name and that person will be tagged in that event which is very useful if you want to invite someone now the calendar views oh I'm sorry the calendar views is another great option for the events for displaying them let's say we have our events list here and um, we don't want to see the whole bunch of events here let's say October November and so on. we only have want to see some specific data for example the events that will happen next few weeks so again we can go to calendar and here uh, we can see that the current view is calendar there may be a list view and we can create a new view with the, the data that we only want to see there's pretty fine uh, pretty fine templates like Gantt view if we, we can uh, create totally whole new view but I have already prepared the Gantt view so we can quickly switch to that so we may view the events like this or we may uh, apply filtering as I mentioned so we can see only the specific events so this calendar view feature is a great way to select only the data that you need to display on the page okay and that's basically all that I wanted to cover in this training session. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye.